Hey, it's Frank. Hey, it's your friend Finn. And we're here with week seven of View Little. Nobody told me there'd be a dragon. Let's address the dragon in the room. Finn, you have now watched <laughs> Doolittle 75 times. This is a big one. This is your Diamond Jubilee massive milestone. Does the movie still surprise you after 75 viewings? I mean, we, we aren't to address the diamond in the room. <laughs> the, <laughs> drag, the drag in the room. Uh, honestly, it's kind of relaxing. Or today was kind of relaxing. I didn't like sleep through it at all. I was kind of just like present. And then I felt very <laughs> relaxed watching it today. That's I, what 75 viewings will bring you. A oneness with the movie. <laughs> yeah, this is the release. But yeah, let's not ever mention it again. I've seen this 75 <laughs> times. Okay, we won't bring it up again until we uh, cross the 100 mark. In 25 <laughs> weeks. <laughs> So since you have now <laughs> this uh, vast array, these 75 viewings to go through, uh, what's what's the thing where... Oh, I'm self-actualized. <laughs> no, you have enough data, you have enough results. Yeah, what is that? What, what am I trying to say? You Nirvana. Like, statistically... Yeah, have you know like you a have good, a sample size? Yeah, a good sample a large, size. Good large sample, sample size. size. Yeah. So you have a large enough sample size now. Uh, I think that we should go through the characters... And we're going to do a three-tier grading system of fail, pass, or exceed for each performance of these characters. I have them listed out here. I tried to write them in order of appearance. So the first one, starting in the animated sequence, is Jip, the dog. Uh, fail. Fail. And this is played by Tom Holland. Do you have any any uh notes on why you're failing him yeah because it's it, he sounds awful <laughs> like, like it doesn't sound like tom holland it sounds like they found someone to do a tom holland impersonation this might be a wrong time to bring it up but we we saw like recording of him in the studio doing different lines right and, and the thing to note is that he sounded like himself the audio quality sounds much better from those behind the scene things which doesn't make sense to me I wonder if it was related to reshoots and they're shooting in different studios or if it's related to they did some kind of post-processing work on audio and then kind of made it weird. That is true. Maybe they they couldn't get the people back in the studio for re-recording lines. Like that's also Because they're working on different movies and there are other places in the world so they can't come into the same studio. They don't have the director there with them or something. I mean, I don't so know. So they have to change the like how they sound or something, yeah. I guess. I have no idea. <laughs> Otherwise, as a character, I... This pharmacist dog, Jip. I'm a, he I'm a, wears I'm a, glasses. I'm going to change. Glasses. I, I think pass is pass? fine, actually. Okay, okay. Pass as a character. Jip. The next person who appears is Doolittle. Ooh, that's a tough one. I, I'm going to say fail. Because this is something I wrote in my notes. Is Doolittle very unlikable. It's very weird to have a main character that's super unlikable and never really redeems themselves. Because every time... They're put in a position to do so. Like when they're on the boat and he's giving an emotional speech to Stubbins about Lily, it's undercut by Elliot and Essie. Like sipping, sipping the coconut. coconut. Yeah. yeah. Then when he's talking to, he's giving a speech at Rizuli's Island, it's undercut by the orangutan, which he's an exceed, but it's <laughs> undercut by the orangutan giving like his weird joke. And then same thing with the dragon. And it's just very weird that all the times when you're trying to make me sympathize with the character, you're making a joke out of it. Yeah. And otherwise, he doesn't really accomplish much. He, You could completely take him out of the movie. He, He's not really needed. All of the thrust in the movie comes from the characters around him. Yeah, so I, I, I think he's a hard fail. A failure on writing, a failure on performance. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing about performance, too, is like, his accent's bad. So if you take that out of it, like if mm -hmm. you just accept that it's a bad accent, I think the performance is still bad, but mostly because the good parts of it are undercut. <laughs> Cause like when he's on the boat, uh, the first time where he has like a vision of Lily, like that's really good. I like that a mm -hmm. lot. And then when he's giving the speech to Stubbins on the boat as well, like he's doing a good job or when he's finally breaking down on the Island, those are all fine performances. But they don't mean anything because you don't want your main character to be depressed. Like, it's a kid's movie. Yeah. And it seems like they wanted to just, like, get that out. What was that movie, Inside Out? They they successfully had a kid's movie that dealt with emotions. But they did it in a really smart way of, like, 
not like dumbing it down, but making it things kids would be dealing with. Kids also deal with depression, but this is like an adult sense of a man who's essentially cut himself off the world. He hangs out with animals all the time, stays up late, wakes up at like 12 p.m. So I don't think it's the right character for that. But I mean, you're right. You can do depression well for kids. And, and for what it's worth, like the end of him seeing the, the dragon, like that's a good scene. On that dragon scene, I saw Universal, their official YouTube channel. They recently posted a clip from the movie. Recently being, uh, it might have been weird. like six months ago. And they titled it, Robert Downey Jr. heals a broken-hearted dragon. And it's just the dragon scene with the colon. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what they titled it, which is really funny, actually. So credit to Universal titled the, the video. That's like what was in the storyboards. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that phrasing right there. Yeah. And instead it's impacted colon. <laughs> I mean, she is brokenhearted. That's not incorrect. It's not. It's, he it's just <laughs> doesn't really heal her heart. <laughs> The next character in the movie is the fox, Tutu, who's played by Marion Cotillard. <laughs> Pass. Pass. Again, like, audio quality is bad, but I think it's really weird that there's just an asynchronous, <laughs> like, a French fox who's been in World War II. <laughs> it would have been funnier if she had, like, a gun strapped yeah, to her yeah, bag yeah. And <laughs> a beret and everything oh my resistance gear <laughs> yeah resistance garb the duck dab 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 is just a straight pass do you think dab dab's a exceed as far as the way octavia spencer plays it the, i think the voice acting is good it's not really funny but that's not really her fault like <laughs> To keep constantly berating that a leak is medical equipment. I mean, like, Dab Dab has some of the funnier moments, like when he spits T.I. Yeah, it, it just, just rolls, rolls off my back. back. <laughs> like, yeah. that's fine. Borderline pass exceed. I wouldn't complain if anyone said that she exceeds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say pass for now, but we yeah. might revisit that if we don't have, if we don't beat the quota. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Do you want me to read characters that don't have lines? They just have... Yeah. Okay. So there's the birds that are just flying around. Uh, in general, bird flying around birds. So like the birds that poops on the nose of Rizzoli's statue. Oh, you, you gotta give me a specific bird. Okay, it, well, in this case, since we're going in order chronologically, these are the birds that are flying in the gate in the animated sequence. So they're giving like visual movement to all of the animated sequences. Pass. Easy okay. pass. Animated birds getting the pass. Because you're right, they're doing their purpose. Like, they're just there to provide movement. It's mm -hmm. colorful. Good. Uh, the hippo. Pass. He gets his teeth cleaned, it looks like, or his mouth checked. Mm -hmm. And then he also, there's another hippo that's perhaps the same hippo. It's giving them a ride through a river in the animated sequence as well. Yep. I believe next is Polly, the parrot, played by Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. I'm going to say pass. I don't think Emma Thompson exceeds, but by far the most likable character sort of the narrative thrust and the narrator but i do think she's kidnapping kids and feeding them <laughs> <laughs> she's finding hunters in the forest and leading them luring them in <laughs> why was she there in the first place we mentioned this last time but why was she there yeah what is she doing in these forests well yeah. she's just waiting for boys to wander around and then she <laughs> says follow me and i think it was either happenstance or planned that kevin was shot the other thing about Polly, the lens of the movie is structured through her right she's right. she's giving the narration at the start and in the middle and connecting things together for us is she an unreliable narrator is she bending truths? Is well, she lying? I think we need to address that she's pro-monarchy because, yeah, she wants to save the queen. And I I think she's, she like, the narrative of the movie is that originally he's an anti-queen because he doesn't care about the monarchy or politics. And then do little switches after Polly shows him the true way, which is colonialism. <laughs> <laughs> which is why they have to go to this <laughs> tropical island and take its resources and bring them back to save the queen yeah and um there's a scene where kevin is on the or and there's like no blood at all you can't tell he's injured at all right because he's not and i have it written down <laughs> that he's faking it for polly <laughs> <laughs> they just did unnecessary surgery <laughs> 
And then Polly lies a couple times. I, she does lie a couple times. Do you have it written down one? I, I just wrote down that she's a sociopathic liar. She lies to summons a couple times to make him feel better. Yeah. And then to do what she wants. Right. But yeah, I think she either Kevin is faking it or she there were two gunshots, but they happen at the same time. So you <laughs> she's, can't. she's the one who shoots Kevin. There's a second shooter. <laughs> she brings yes. him down. <laughs> but I think she's a pass. I don't think she exceeds yeah, I think that's fair. I think all the exceeds are going to be... Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to but, it. <laughs> but Next, we have Lily, who's played by Kasia Smutniak. I'll give her a pass. No, I, I don't really have much to say on Lily. She's not really in the movie. No, she's not. This is kind of a poly theory as well, though. But in the unreliable narrator department, the only reason that we know Lily actually dies in this storm is because Polly's Maybe Lily's alive, and she just is tired of... Doolittle's. So she's like, here, Polly, I'm done. Take this ring. Give it to Doolittle. Say that I died. <laughs> I, well, I still think Polly killed her. And crashed or Polly the boat. killed her, yeah. yeah. With possible. dynamite, because it's her dynamite. She does. It is her dynamite. So I think she explodes the boat and kills Lily because <laughs> she because there's a scene in the animation where uh, Lily arrives with Polly, and Polly is sort of like in the middle of them and they're both giving their affection to Polly and then they look up and they fall in love like instantly. Right, 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 right. right. And I think she's jealous of that. So she has to get rid of Lily. Yeah, knocks her off. Knocks her off. I buy it. Or she tells her to leave and never come back and that's the sequel. She comes back. Oh, (laughs) Universal does like, did Lily really die? She can talk to animals. Maybe a dolphin was swimming by. Maybe she was marooned by Polly somewhere. No, I think she, Polly just took the ring and like had a gun on there. It was like, hey, if you show your face, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> and we know she's a great shot because she hits the squirrel. Yeah. So. All right. Lily pass, Polly pass. Um, next appears Chi Chi, who's played by Rami Malik. <laughs> Fail. Fail. Oh. Hard fail. Ooh. What's this based on for you? Rami Malik. <laughs> oh. uh, the voice acting's really bad. Chi Chi's not very likable. He does kick a tiger in the balls. So that's <laughs> that's past territory. But what about in terms of uh character arc? He he does have one. <laughs> yeah. I I've never liked his character arc because I don't think it's it's not an arc. It's like a series of events that just happen. Like there's no through line really. You never see him gain over his fear. You just see him succumbing to it, and then suddenly he's put in a position where he either lets his friend die or he jumps in. But there's no like build up towards it. And I mean, then, a little bit like like because if you if you compare the tiger scene to the dive scene, Chi Chi drops the rope because he gets scared of a cannon shot, and then he doesn't pick it and back he doesn't up. pick it back up. And by not doing that. He's technically like, I mean, Doolittle could die there. That's a life or death choice. Similar to breaking the bars and attacking the tiger. So right. he, he finally breaks the bars. And he does squeeze his little body <laughs> through his massive through a body. tiny hole. Okay, you've convinced me. He's a pass. I mean, his performance can be a fail and still, <laughs> you know, like, that, well, <laughs> it depends what, for you, what you've seen it 75 times, what outweighs what. You I know think Rami I mean? Malik is incredibly annoying. <laughs> his Which voice is, acting is. His voice acting, we watched that behind the scenes clip, and his voice acting is different in the behind the scenes, isn't it? Like yeah, the way it is. The way his lines are delivered. He's still, he's doing a thing with his voice, mm-hmm. which I don't get why he's doing it, but it's like deliberate and it didn't, it didn't sound bad. Yeah. It sounds like he's like demasculating himself. Like he's trying to sound like church mousy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. less of like an intimidating presence. While still like trying to be a gorilla, yeah. We see we only heard like two lines of him in, in the behind the, the scenes, yeah. Yeah, which you will post that video. I'll put it in the show notes so people oh, yeah. can check it out. Here's something fun that I did. I went through on Twitter and typed in Doolittle 2020, and I looked at every <laughs> single tweet that has been tweeted, and that's how I found this behind the scenes reel that shows a lot of interesting things related to perhaps previous cuts of the movie. Some interesting direction and things like that and some kind of interesting special like the way they did special effects like the giraffe car and yeah the there's, ostrich there's quad like bike a, and stuff like that a dune buggy with uh like a long pole with just a giraffe head stuck on it yeah that they used for the giraffe chase sequence and it kind of rules <laughs> i would drive that car yeah <laughs> i think i'm gonna change him to a pass chi chi yeah 
Okay. I think that's fair because you're right. He is the narrative thrust of the movie, like the most of an arc. Um, Yoshi. Oh, pass. No, exceed. Ooh. <laughs> Our first exceed. What's your reasoning for that? Respect. <laughs> uh, John Cena is the best voice actor. Yeah, I think that's like fair. Him or Octavia Spencer or Rafe Fines. It's one of them, but. Is it his fault that all the lines are bad and he's just used as like a bro polar bear, a bro polar bear punchline? I don't think so. And who's the funniest? Because I would argue he's like top 10, which isn't great, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe like top five. He's I think he's probably top five because they're not really that funny. No. I'm kind of convincing myself this is more of a pass, but I do think he's like stand out, even if it's not good <laughs> you said in the first episode that you didn't think anyone was on set with robert downey jr like none of the voice acting talent right uh there's from the red carpet event from the premiere there's a couch that has robert downey jr michael sheen craig robinson and john cena and the interviewer directly asks john cena if they had met each other like during the filming of it and john cena points to downey jr and michael sheen says that they did and like Craig Robinson, it was his first time meeting Robert Downey Jr. in person. Yeah. It was this event. So it made it seem like the voice acting talent were not on set at all. It feels great to be validated. Yeah, yeah. Because it definitely seems like they did it. And I don't actually know with with live action voice Talking acted animal movies, movies, how yeah. many actually would visit set. Like, is that a common practice? Maybe it isn't. I mean, I think it would only be at the sets close, right? Like yeah, if you have yeah. a reason to visit. And, and the fact that they were filming in London probably made it. I would imagine like some of the Londoner, like English people might yeah, have maybe, visited um, set. Tom Holland or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I would say Yoshi's an exceed. I also just like the bro polar bear because polar bears are frat bros in real life. <laughs> I like that narrative. Next, we have the elephants. Exceed. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Does he mean it? No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> they pass. All right. I like elephants. They're cool. They appear in the animated sequence and they also, that's probably when they do the most. Yeah. And if they, anything, I'm. They're I'm also a little walking mad that they're not in more because elephants are a perfect animal for this kind of movie, and they're like, fun to voice act too. Yeah. Like, give me your best elephant. Like, if you had the voice line, I say, hey, do you have any peanuts for us? <laughs> We're running a bit low. <laughs> What's the character's name? He just goes by um, Baron or something like that. And this has been fin fiction. <laughs> Just sneaking that one in every episode now. <laughs> All right, we got a cow. Next one. Is that the cow that the door is shut on? Because <laughs> there's a he's cow standing that... outside and the door gets shut on. <laughs> yeah, whenever whenever he stops receiving patients, that cow's dead. Patients. <laughs> there's also a cow at the very end of the movie when he's receiving patients again in line, and it looks similar. It's like a dairy cow with this brown and white, black and white spots. So it's there for revenge. That's the sequel bait. Or it's a different cow and that cow died because it's you been know, seven. That's what, that's what I'm saying is it's the cow. There for revenge. It's returned. <laughs> seven years ago, you did not treat me. No, it's the, the daughter or oh, the son of right, right, right. the progeny. The son of the cow. Um, the cow returned. Cow pass. Butterflies similar to the birds in the animated sequence. Yeah, pass. Pass. All right. Uh, horses. There's horses in the animated sequence shut out of the gates, similar to the cow. And there's also horses that chase the giraffe. The giraffe horses fail because they didn't catch the giraffe. <laughs> That's true, but giraffes are pretty fast. We looked it up. I think it was 37 miles per hour top 37 speed. 37 <laughs> miles per hour. And they can run it for multiple miles. That's a sustained speed. How fast are horses? Because I imagine horses are quite fast, too. I'm pretty sure they're faster. Can't horses go like 60 miles per hour or something? Should I check so we're not having yeah, to do a reshoot? Let's get some horse facts up here. Horse top speed. 55 miles per hour on a yeah. sprint. So fail. <laughs> Horses fail. Horses fail. <laughs> they don't catch the giraffe. <laughs> they didn't catch and that the giraffe, way. they don't catch is Betsy. How do you feel about Betsy? You should. This is, this is voiced by Selena Gomez. It's weird that Betsy was seemingly more important in like the animated sequence it's like the third yeah, character she, she, that appears. Right. They free Chi Chi. They give Yoshi a hat and get him out of the Arctic. And then Betsy is shown just walking on a sand yeah. dune with and them. The, and then the next is the fox, I think. The fox is already at Doolittle's house. Okay. But in that like walking, the exploring sequence, it seems like Betsy was going to be an important character. Yeah. And then is not. I do like the draft car. 
So that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Selena Gomez could have been anyone. Speak for yourself. We're wanted in three forests. <laughs> How did you get her in the studio? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Frank could replace her in the movie. So. <laughs> I, Betsy is a fail. I do like the symbiotic relationship that Betsy and Tutu have, the fox. I think it's kind of fun to have this small, small, large animal duo that are supposed thieves and well, resistance fighters. We talked about this last time, but you, if you have a hat, you're sentient. Right. So, so the, the fox, the fox is, is, is a, a faux hat. Oh, very appropriate. <laughs> wow. Faux fur. <laughs> faux fur, faux fur hat. Faux fur hat. No, it's a fur faux hat, not a faux fur hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you ask me, Betsy and Tutu together, that's a pass. But Okay, that's fair. When it's... you separate them out, yeah. Betsy fails. Yeah. The dog in the animated sequence of the queen. Wait, isn't it? It's a different dog. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you're right. It's like it's a, a little. Poor... It's a little lap dog. Dogs always exceed our standards, I think. <laughs> Except Jim, <laughs> who I failed. <laughs> No, I passed him. Yeah, I uh, that dog was cute. Exceeds. Wow. Okay. The queen's queen's dog. It's royalty. It's a royal dog. <laughs> Monarchist. Um, <laughs> uh, Stubbins, who's played by Henry Collett. Okay. How do you want me to rate this one? Because <laughs> this one's difficult. His performance is definitely not good. It's quite bad. I should mention, I read uh, an interview with him. It was on him talking about talking as animals. And they had people teach him how to sound like animals for something. I read a tweet by one of the people who taught him how to speak in animals. It was just something basic, like, that's a rap on Doolittle. And they posted a picture and they, they said, whoever said never to work with animals or kids, don't listen to them. This was a lot of fun. And the picture was of a book that said like how to talk like an animal or something like that. She's like an acting coach. On that, like, it seems like everyone involved in production had a lot of fun. That's like all the things I've read yeah. is that no one was like angry or like, it seemed like a, they a, made a point of, even whenever new directors came in to do reshoots and rewrites, they made a point of saying that everyone was cordial with each other there was no like bad energy supposedly yeah but his performance isn't very good okay so uh he said yeah it was pretty awkward because it was silent in the studio and you're making these sounds that don't really sound good at all there was this bit in the movie and it was me trying to imitate a polar bear roar and i'm on the side of the boat going roar roar, roar. <laughs> and that was quite awkward and embarrassing but it was all right because now i've seen the final product and it doesn't look so bad <laughs> 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 but at the time, it was quite awkward because it was in a silent studio. Oh my gosh. I'm making these bird noises and things like that. I was actually wearing the sounds the animals make. They were telling me how to speak animal on set. The, that polar bear roar was improvised, but the other stuff like the monkey and the peacock was completely real. Wow. And it says a lot because those are good. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> wow. But just him saying, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, it was Could still bad. Worse. It was still yeah. bad, but it wasn't so bad. <laughs> I thought that was funny. So, yeah, I don't know what to think about his performance. I think his performance is bad, but I don't know how much of it is his fault. Is, is what I guess I'm getting at. Because it seems like there was a lack of direction on some things and... There was direction and coaching on other things. His only like good acting part for me is like when he says like I don't know what irony is like that. <laughs> the delivery of that one yeah, line. Yeah, and then the, when he's talking to Doolittle about Lily. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. those sequences were good, and I think it's because Stephen, that was like the the main arching plot for the original movie was like dealing with that depression. And I think that was when he was getting the most direction. Like, here, this is how you need to act. This is your motivation, that sort of thing. By making all this up. So, yeah. Like, it's all. So much of his screen time is happy, shocked face. Happy, what what is going on face. So, that's a tough one. Uh, I think he's, I think he is a pass. Really? I, I feel bad failing a 14-year-old. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, you got to leave your greater, Mr. Well, Stubbins. you know what? It's 2023, and I think in 2020, that interview I read, he was 16. Um, which is another thing, is because when they did reshoots, he was, he was much older. older. <laughs> when you're, you know, 14 turning 15, puberty is a real thing. <laughs> like, your voice is still changing by then. Your body's still changing. And that might be why he looks funny in his clothes in some scenes <laughs> and not in others. It's because he got taller. I think he always looks funny in his clothes. <laughs> he does. But I do think that's a thing. Like, I do think he probably got taller for reshoots. Um he okay so 2020 is 16 it's now 2023 so he's an adult we can fail him okay <laughs> sorry stubbins valiant effort okay we did stubbins stubbins uncle who is played by ralph innocent he's his a, name is arnold stubbins in case you're curious he is a really good actor he is a good actor <laughs> i think that he does well with his role in this he does he okay if we're going off the funniest lines this way, me scattered squirrel. I'm worried about the boy, Betten. <laughs> <laughs> he likes spiders. Not even spiders like spiders. Yeah. Exceeds. Exceeds. All right. I do wish that they had somehow resolved that better than just doing a shot of them watching the birth of their hunting dogs. Yeah. Well, they finally replaced their son. They're going to kill him now. They don't need <laughs> they don't to flush need... out the top of the dogs. <laughs> They've got enough hunting dogs for that. <laughs> Oh, that brings us to the boy. <laughs> the boy. His, his son, does he have a name? He does have a name. Arnold Stubbins Jr. <laughs> Exceed. <laughs> he's played He's played by Sonny Ashbourne Circus, who's Andy Circus's son. Yeah, Exceed. Top five lines in the movie is, Good oh, player, Dad. Good player, Dad. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> You've watched this now a couple times with me. I laugh every single time. You do laugh every line. single time. <laughs> Kevin appears next. Fail. This is Kevin played by Craig Robinson. Fail. He Kevin fail. sucks. <laughs> what do you have to say posit like in a positive light about Kevin? Um, he doesn't immediately fall for the Doolittle cult. So like, it's a cult. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> I've been thinking about that. Uh, the pets versus cult idea. Doolittle specifically does not call them his pets. And if you think about a pet, what a pet does in your home, it basically just gets to live a life of leisure. So he very specifically says these animals are not pets. They do not live a life of leisure. They must work for me. That is the implication behind this. Yeah. They have roles to fill. They're my steeds. They get me places. They fetch things for me. Yeah. And he's tricked them into... They work my trains that fly around my house. He's tricked them into, like, enjoying this. And that's the thing about, like, him solving their problems. He doesn't actually do it. Chi-Chi's the only part where he shows, like, actual... Mm -hmm. uh, Mike was saying he, that's because Chi-Chi, one day he will own this place. Because <laughs> he has hands. He's, he's got hands. He gets to take over. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, the polar bear just suddenly isn't cold. But he doesn't do anything. He just gives him a hat, which that's something. He's you, still a little cold. That's something. He still likes to get warmed up by the fire. That's something like that. you do in a cult. You seem to know a lot about cults. Oh that's yeah, don't don't think about that. <laughs> but like people who are uh, like in a vulnerable place, if you offer them like a small token, it's a way of like, oh, he cares about me. But really, it's it's just a hat. Yeah. Like it's something that it doesn't matter to him at all. But it's a token of appreciation that he's now using. And Yoshi's, like, is heavy. He does all the work for him. He keeps the other animals in line. Like, when the ostrich is uh, revolting a bit. And he blows up a building with dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. What were we talking we about? We were talking about Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> you failed him. Craig Robinson. Yeah, he, he's a fail. In that behind the scenes, there's a line that Craig Robinson delivers where he's like, Hey, down here. And I'm pretty sure that that's Fleming the Mouse. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if Fleming the Mouse was... In the original story, the first person to speak to Stubbins, and Stubbins realized he had an affinity for talking to animals. And that's what gets him to go to Dr. Doolittle's place. This mouse leads him <laughs> along. That's my guess. It, it makes sense to me that there's like a, a weird, like, there's like the sort of, sort of like science fiction elements with the trains and stuff, mm -hmm. like steampunk esque, like Verdian esque. Mm -hmm. And then you watch like the original, like, not the original, but like the eddie murphy dr doolittle where it's sort of like he just gets the ability somehow 
that's sort of what it feels like it should be and like a mouse that just talks suddenly to starts and, talking and to him stop yeah. is like oh this is something i can do like an inherent trait yeah rather than like a he, he's a something gifted lingu- yeah. linguist yeah right. but yeah i think he's just a fail he's pretty bad <laughs> i do like when he he's about to die and he's like oh, i'm I'm, I'm, and then he says, buy Bitcoin XXX in the Robert Downey Jr. Series. <laughs> Do little NFTs for sale. <laughs> Next, we have the ducks that Stubbins tries to shoot. Pass. They all go away. <laughs> Easy pass. The mice. They're playing chess. Oh, the chess mice? The chess mice. I don't like how it's not actually chess. Yeah. Okay, but bringing up Wizard's Chess, <laughs> I have written down that this movie, for being a kid's movie that people are complaining about that there's a lot of, like, fart jokes, there's only, like, the one in the end with the dragon. And I was thinking it needs more fart jokes. <laughs> so there's a scene where chi is like... He doesn't want to make a decision on what his next chess move is. So he turns around and puts his big butt towards the mi- the chessboard and the mice, and they're, like, afraid. Mm-hmm. That would have been the perfect moment to just have a fart, and then all the mice get thrown away, like, <laughs> they get blasted 30 yards. <laughs> One of them's, like, clutching his, their, his head because it's sad that all his friends just got murdered. <laughs> <laughs> So, in light of that not happening, <laughs> would you pass or fail or exceed the mice that are playing chess? I mean, I don't know what game they're playing because it's well, not really some chess. Some form of chess. That scene's really good. Yeah, pass. All right. That's one of the best scenes in the movie. The speaking in animal sequence is really good. Up until it does that close-up zoom to Robert Downey Jr. doing the... <laughs> yeah. It's not good. <laughs> Which brings us to Lady Rose. You may call me Lady Rose. (laughs) Who is a... I read a couple interviews she did. She said that she is the lady in waiting to the queen. Yeah. So that line, it is about he doesn't want to leave it in the current queen's hands. So Lord to Lord Badgley, a 30-year-old woman is absolutely too young to be ruling the kingdom yeah someone who's been ruling the kingdom since she's 18 it's she's too young it's been 12 years but by god we have to put an end to it now <laughs> yeah lord badgley hates women That's yeah confirmed confirmed uh she passes i well what are your thoughts i do so admire how you don't give up yeah like, um i don't know that she a, doesn't really do anything no but she's just kind of can't i don't think i don't think there's a reason to fail her the 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 only thing that's like questionable is that she's not instead of pouting that he's not going to help the queen right like if she really cared so deeply about the queen which she would she would be sitting in the operating room watching him operate on the squirrel and she wouldn't have a face of wonder she would be furious but He's operating on a squirrel instead of coming to see the queen. I should have pulled it up, but there was a scene that got cut where her and Stubbins are talking about their character motivation sort of in that scene. Okay. And that, because someone asked her, like, what what was the scene that got cut that you thought, like, was... Would have been helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's what she said. And then she was like, but it's the movie's still good or something. <laughs> so, Very political answer. I mean, honestly, she this was her first movie uh, and it was her first audition. Carmel Laniato is her name. So as far as like, I didn't do a bad job. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I think the character is a bit of a wet fart, but, <laughs> but she's a pass. <laughs> she's God. a pass, yeah. Um, okay, then we have the peacock uh pass peacocks in the movie twice um there's a few peacocks that sub and stub and sees when he gets yeah. into the facility the one that is genuinely fun i think is the one that he uses to block out the window and then, like, with its tail feathers looks between, it looks its, between legs. its legs at him and it's like <laughs> it doesn't have a speaking role but um it does peacock sounds and then uh same in the or room in the end of the movie yeah, it's blocking the window Yeah, so that the family can't watch the operation. And then once the puppies are born, it reveals. 
once again because he doesn't know how to do medicine once they right. got the different dog in there right. <laughs> once they replaced once they wheeled in the cart from, <laughs> they pulled out the puppies from the local animal shelter <laughs> okay the lion cub <sighs> fail i hate the lion cub <laughs> two speaking lines it sucks i i got nothing good to say about it express emotional vulnerability that is one of the lines. Do you know the second? Um, it's it's not like a joke or anything. It's like a context line. It's something about when the boy is... Why some, are humans say that, bad? Yeah, it's something like that. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Why are humans bad? Jip's the one who answers her. Yeah. And says, like, if you don't let them get close, you can't be hurt or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Elliot and Elsie. Elsie. Elsie? Elliot and Elsie. He says Essie. Essie. Elliot and Essie. But, but it's spelled in like the, in E the, L. Yeah, we had the subtitles on this time for the first time. And it's spelled E L S I E. But it's like Essie. Elsie. Elsie. Essie. Elliot and Essie. The capuchin monkeys. I guess pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right now launch on a long winded explanation on why. I want to hear it. <laughs> I think they're good. Uh, um, that's it, really. They just do what they're... They're just joke characters. Yeah, they I are. will say, they aren't smart animals. They're quite dumb. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> they operate the whale. They can speak whale. They can't play... Well, I feel like monkeys can just play instruments. <laughs> <laughs> they have the they have the fingers to be able yeah, to like, operate. And, and like... Like, I think they're just monkey they intelligent. The, they have the mouth structure that they can play an instrument. Yeah. They're not, like, sentient intelligent, though. And I think those monkeys are just monkey intelligent in the movie. And that's why they can't speak. Yeah. That's why we never hear their English. Right, because they're actually speaking English. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> right. he, they, they do talk with Stubbins a lot. They do. So it is kind of weird, though. That's given true. that they're part of the tutors of Stubbin on the ship that you see. That they are never, never voiced. Voiced. They were just saying too many naughty things, and they, all their lines are gross. Yeah. Uh, sticks is next. Uh, pass. Yeah. We the, oh, the chittering stick book. We should mention we watched it with subtitles. So the line at the end that we really hate, the vial of deadly nightshade. That's its own separate line. The vial of deadly nightshade. And that's eight yeah. syllables. Robert Downey Jr.'s Doolittle has several moments where his lines aren't clear where breaks are when yeah. he's expressing things. So one is as he's quoting sticks. The other is when he's telling... Uh, don't stop! Clint, yeah, <laughs> don't stop! Don't stop! No, don't stop! It should have been like, don't stop! Don't stop! Okay! You're right. It should have just been like, yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. I Sticks. mean, you saw like the ostrich thing he was riding, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that the quad bike, the ostrich quad bike. <laughs> it's so cool. Arthur the mouse. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> Arthur? How long have you, have you been in there? I don't know. What year is it? Uh, hint to the time travel right there. <laughs> I think what's funny about this thing we just did is we just quoted from memory the lines perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> In sequence. Like, that was just the correct scene right there. And I think that needs to be... Uh, we'll, we'll give Arthur an exceed for that. Uh, clearly, those lines have stuck in our head. Yeah, deserves it. Des <laughs> What, a, what a, wow <laughs> i got nothing else to say on that nice job arthur uh mini the sugar glider there's so many characters there are so many characters mini had mike's favorite line i born i born which is really bad i don't like mini that much <laughs> no, mini sucks <laughs> sorry mike i really don't like mini and i don't have a good reason to fail her but I, it's, I, it's voiced by nick a fisher who's like a five-year-old boy fit so <laughs> he needs to grow up to <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm sorry mini you're failed <laughs> i don't have a good reason to fail mini do you um it's just a nothing creature like all of the <laughs> all of the things that mini does should have been done by kevin Right? I thought you meant just sugar gliders. Oh, sugar gliders? Yeah, sugar gliders suck. No, like, delivering the Eden fruit to Stubbins so he can 
squeeze it into the queen's mouth. That should have been done by Kevin. So that the squirrel that shot the boy and hates him and him have this moment of also, redemption. Okay. So we were talking about Ellie and essay not having like lines and mm-hmm. like, why does Minnie have a child? Like, is it a, a child character? Is it, how old is that sugar glider? They just need someone that sounded like a cute little critter. I guess. I guess. But that speaks in fragmented English, which is, again, points to the fact that it's real English that Minnie is speaking. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't really like Minnie. All right. <laughs> fail. Minnie fail. The guards. Be more specific. All of the guards in Buckingham Palace that are marching around and pulling up their guns on the... Is Gareth a separate Gareth character? Gareth is a separate character. Guards fail. Guards fail. They're not very good. No, they're loyalist thugs. They are. They are. They, they even turn on the queen at the yeah, flip of a hat. They do. They don't let him deliver the fruit to her. Then we have Gareth. He's a, he, he's a pass because he has one of the better lines of, uh, sometimes I make a wish to ladybugs before they fly away. That's an example of like a fine non sequitur punchline. It's not great, and it sort of undercuts the tension, but that's the point of it, is that you don't need tension at this scene. You've already caught the villain. This is You're trying to wrap things up, right. so undercutting the tension's good, because it shows that this isn't going any further. Gareth is played by Oliver Chris. <laughs> Crispy Oliver. <laughs> Crispy Oliver. Sir Gareth. He gets, yeah. he gets the pass. He gets the pass. Plimpton, played by Kumail Nanjiani. <sighs> what are your thoughts on Plimpton? I don't know. I think it's a fail, but... I also want to say a fail. I, I've never liked Plimpton. I feel like I've made that clear. I mean, he does give, like, the counterpoint to Yoshi, John Cena, which... But I don't know that that's actually okay. fun. Like, I think John Cena's character doesn't... It would still be fun, even if it didn't have this weird... As a power couple, <laughs> I would say they exceed because they are both different species of animals and they are gay. They, they're they also both closeted, which is not great. But if we're just saying as, like, individual characters, Yoshi exceeds, Plimpton fails. I don't like Plimpton. And in Camille Nanjiani's defense, he doesn't do the worst job. He's inconsistent, but I think that's due to reshoots, re-edits. In the beginning, it's not... He's not terrible. And also, I, I think see, that's that's a good point. I like him when he's doing like the steed stuff. Yeah. Maybe he shouldn't have come on the boat. He could have stayed back with the giraffe and the fox. Yeah, but then he, that's the whole story is him and will they, won't they. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you get sort of an unsatisfactory conclusion of that's they, friendship. Bro. Of we, we don't know yet. Yeah. That they'll ever overcome their their biases. <laughs> <laughs> what they were describing was not friendship. That was love. It's true. But that that's such a frat bro response to like <laughs> <laughs> being a gay frat bro uh, polar bear. Like that's such a good response. <laughs> that's friendship, bro. <laughs> and then Plimpton says, I, I, I like this, bro. And then... And then- uh, Kevin's there crying. Yeah, but it it's like he's unsure that it's friendship. Yeah, because they, they don't want uh, the audience to know that they want to be able to release this in China. It's- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Queen. This is played by uh, Jesse, Jesse Buckley. Buckley. Queen Victoria. Pass. That's a tough one too because she doesn't do anything. But she lays in bed. The lines at the end pass. What are you all doing here? Is there a giraffe in my bedroom? Oh yes, and a fox, and a gorilla, and an orangutan, and a gay polar bear, <laughs> <laughs> and his lover. And then she's like, and "To the tower with them." <laughs> and who's this boy? Oh, uh, he's Stubbins. That's Stubbins. <laughs> That's Stubbins. <laughs> it's so funny. That's, That's Stubbins. A, who, who's Who's this boy? Stubbins. <laughs> no first name. His character name is Tommy Thomas. Stubbins. Tom, yeah, but Tommy Stubbins. Tommy is never, never one said. He's only Stubbins. He's a mono name. He's like a Brazilian. <laughs> Stubbins. <laughs> okay. Queen gets a pass. Yeah, uh, pass. Moodfly. Michael Sheen. <laughs> pass. I don't like the character. I can't fail Michael Sheen for this. 
Yeah. I think that's where I'm at. I think the he performance does what he can. is good. The character is bad. I think that's fair. Lord Badgley. God. Um, played by Oscar winner <laughs> Jim Broadbent. Jim Broadbent. Yep. Right? Oscar winner. Oscar winner Jim Broadbent. Fail. He still has the nightshade in his pocket. <laughs> okay, He's a so... horrible villain. He's stupid. <laughs> so we're on the same page. He could have gotten away with it if he wasn't a complete idiot. Uh, his performance is fine. Yep. It's, the, it's just, I hate that he still has the poison. And I don't know why it's in his breast pocket. <laughs> like he poisoned, his right breast pocket. Why would he keep it? He poisoned her once. They had the tea. She's died in a week. Why would yeah, he get why, rid of it? Why would he even need it for anymore? Why did he even have it in the first place? Because he was holding on to it for Moodfly. Until Moodfly comes back. <laughs> Here's your poison. I mean, nightshade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the leeches. We need more of the leeches. So pass. fail because... Oh, pass. Pass. Okay. Should have been more. Yeah, should have been more, but you can't, you can't fail them. The attendants in the room. <laughs> fail. Yep. The queen's dying. They gave her poison tea. Yep. They could have figured it out. And they... um. They say dumb stuff like, that dog is licking the queen. Oh, you've watched Grey's and that, right? I bring this up every single time. <laughs> it's like the characters that are just giving a little bit of context. Yeah, right? like, I, there's like For an For the earth... people who were looking at their phones. <laughs> there's like an earthquake in Grey's Anatomy that like, do you remember that plot point? No, I don't. Okay, well, everyone's dying or something. And, and they're like, oh, no, an earthquake. Like, in a room watching news coverage about it. It's just so funny to be like, what? I would the love. The dog is licking the queen. That would be the funniest role you could have in, as an actor. Like, I want to be someone who just says, like, one-liners that <laughs> explain context. Like, that That would be the perfect career for me. I agree. <laughs> Leona the octopus. This confusing character. Snitches get stitches, man. Snitches get stitches, man. Also, another clearly speaking English because why would it be muffled underwater? Doesn't make sense to me. That I I get like it's a visual gag, like underwater they have to talk in a muffled, but it doesn't make sense because you would think an octopus would be able to talk normally underwater or something. I don't know. It's like also why is there an octopus? Who's, who's, who's loyal to the queen that's stuck in a tiny, tiny, tank. tiny tank. Yeah. Um, Leona pass, I guess. I, I, how about the fish that are in the tank? There's fail. a bunch of like dory fish fail. And they could have helped him out. They could have, they could have said something. They just stood around and did nothing. Yep. <laughs> I believe that takes us to Betton, the wife of the uncle. I'm worried about the boy, Betton. <laughs> Give it time. Joanna Page, who plays Betton Stubbins. The wife of Arnold Stubbins, the mother of Arnold Stubbins Jr. <laughs> pass, yeah. Just a pass? <laughs> you think she exceeds? I, no, I'm asking because you gave the uncle and the cousin exceeds. <laughs> so I wanted to see you. <laughs> no, I think pass is fair. That line, I like that line. It doesn't crack me up. Like, nice plan, Dad. Nice plan, Dad. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's the way he looks and he has that, like, grin on his face. That disgusting grin. Um, Yeah, pass. Okay. Now we have the spiders. It's really just a spider. spider yeah. yeah. Well, not even spiders like spiders. So, but I like spiders. So you're going to pass. All right, spider gets a pass. It doesn't actually do anything. It just no. crawls down on its rope, and Stubbins looks at it while he listens to his uncle and aunt talk about him. Um. Okay. Now we have. Dun, 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 dun. We're in the home stretch. The chipmunks, <sighs> which we figured out. For the first time today are chipmunks. Non-essential um, rodents. Non-essential rodents on this boat. You gotta leave those aside. Like I I in fact think that they are a chipmunk infestation. They're they're obviously living amongst the grain. Stubbins lands on the grain and throws chipmunks into the air. And we never see the chipmunks again after the ship is sunk, so I'm pretty sure they all they, died. They all died. Yeah. They were probably below decks and they got exploded. Well, I mean Victoria era there was like a real problem of like chipmunks scurrying on the boats and then, <laughs> then scurrying off on the other house. eden island is now no infested with, with chipmunks, chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> all right they're failed yeah um the lieutenant which one this is the one who says it's a magnificent <laughs> chin, <laughs> chin, <laughs> it's a that magnificent chin. no sir i'm afraid not sir they've escaped He's great. <laughs> Read uh, the room, Lieutenant. <laughs> his name is Mark Umbers. Mark, Mark Umbers, Umbers playing Lieutenant. If you want to be on the podcast, just... I'm afraid not, sir. 
<laughs> well, he's already in the room. Doesn't <laughs> he's our tech guy, our producer. <laughs> yeah, no, Mark Humber is great. I don't know what else he's been in, but he needs to be in more. <laughs> Humphrey the Whale, who is played by. Didn't you play Humphrey the Whale? Yep. I'm on my way. There you go. Tim Traylor plays Humphrey. I looked at his other works because I really like Humphrey the Whale. <laughs> of course I looked you at his IMDb and he voices a ship in Age of Empires 4. So I'm imagining whenever you click the ship around the map, it's every time like they give little voice cues. So I'm imagining going, I'm on my way. So you think that the ship is just, they just stole They took the Humphrey line. lines and they plugged it right into the game Age of Empires 4. That's my suspicion. Oh, I thought you meant the opposite. Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking that Age of Empires 4 watched, the creators watched Doolittle, and they were like, oh, we got to get this guy to voice ships. He's really good. When did it come out? It came out fairly recently. I'm not actually... If you can, if you can submit a timeline on this, I will pass him. Okay, let me look. No, I will exceed him for you. If you can get get me a timeline, I'm exceeding Humphrey. I, I just am. I like, <laughs> I like Humphrey's performance. I think he's great. I, I'm including all of the whales in this because they all have the same voice. Yeah. Okay. Age of Empires four released in October twenty eighth, twenty twenty one. So Humphrey, had, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to they, you. They, they heard him in as Humphrey the whale, and they were like, "We got to get those voice lines in." Humphrey exceeds uh, the fly. Fail. The fly's dead. <laughs> See you, buddy. Derek. <laughs> Derek. Um, I'll give context to Derek because Derek. Um, Derek is... In the version we've been watching, there's a weird cut where it's just this guy in, in a room on his couch explaining to us, like, <laughs> <laughs> the last 20 minutes of the movie. I thought it was weird. I don't remember that in theaters, Frank. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't remember it got. either, but I figured I'd fall asleep in theaters, whatever. So, anyway, these Blu rays that I ordered, you know, for some reason, this guy named Derek is in it. Okay. Derek is Captain William Derek, is played by Elliot Barnes Worrell. He's a British captain. You see him twice. Uh, once is when Moodfly is talking, talking to about the, pa- the papers. Yeah, and then the other ones when he's talking, talking to, to a lieutenant, lieutenant in in but in the background. You see, right? Him. Yeah. So he doesn't say anything except to make some joke about him not being obsessed with Doolittle or something. Pass I'm or fail. afraid your obsession with Doolittle will have to wait. I'm not obsessed with Doolittle. You're obsessed with Doolittle. Yeah. You're the one obsessing about me, obsessing about Doolittle. That's pretty close. Not 100% there. That's pretty close. Thank you. Thank you. Pass. He's a non. I think that that should have just been the lieutenant again. It should have just been the lieutenant. Yeah. He would have been funnier. Yeah. I'm afraid <laughs> not, sir. You are obsessing about Doolittle. <laughs> In fact, you're obsessing about me. (laughs) That brings us to... We finally made it. We made it to Monteverde. Oh, I'm so excited. The wolf. Exceed. (laughs) I love that wolf. Exceed, exceed. The monkeys. Exceed. The pirates. Ooh, that's The pirates and the merchants. We'll kind of break them up into... So the merchants that are like in the market and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, When we get to the room... With my, uh, with uh, Razuli and all those, they all exceed. But okay. the Islanders are pass. Okay, that's fair. But I love the feast scene, and they're like, "We're under attack!" and they all cheer. Exceed. Uh, James the Dragonfly, voiced by Jason Manzukis. Yeah, exceed. No, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. He sucks. I hate James. Just such a useless character. You don't need him. Like yeah. you, you said this time, just have Doolittle converse directly with the ants. Yeah, what, you don't need what this is translator. his purpose? Yeah. And that brings us to Don Carpenterino. Yes, and his ant family. And Don Carp- Carpenterino is voiced by David Scheinkopf. What do you think? Um, Dylan exceeds because he has a massive stinger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they exceed because they're really happy for... Or Don's really excited for his daughter, an ant, to marry a... A, a scorpion. sizable scorpion, a scorpion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I like that. I exceed. Yeah, they see past people's differences. They don't the like ants. James. They don't like James, and that's fair. James sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like him either. It's not because he's a dragonfly. It's because he sucks. Razuli's lions exceed. I don't need to explain that. No, you don't. Um, well, maybe you do. I think they're just passes, personally. Uh, okay. I don't. I don't have a reason. <laughs> they exceed because they're lions. Um, 
<laughs> this, is, this is where my lion bias comes out. But you gave the lion cub oh, that lion a cub fail. So, all right, put it to a pass. You're right. That's what I was thinking. I'm being inconsistent with my own system. You're right. Rizuli himself, Antonio Banderas. Okay, this is tough because I want to say exceed, but that's because I think Antonio Banderas gives one of the best performances of the movie. He's it might be the best performance of the movie. But at the same time, he doesn't do a whole lot. And being the best performance of the movie, there's still some issues with his performance. It all goes back to, like, I like the emotional, like, monologues mm -hmm. to each other when he has them, like, at knife. That scene's so cool. And that scene where he's in the cage... Uh, and he's talking. He, if it like, wasn't, if it wasn't edited so poorly, I I think he he deserves an exceed on on. Yeah, I think he's right on that border past exceed. Yeah, he's right in there. I think if this was a performance in a different movie, he would get an exceed because he he did a good job. So I think he deserves the credit when he listens to this podcast. He'll, he'll be proud. Good job, Antonio. I also recently watched Zorro <laughs> <laughs> and Puss in Boots. So. And Puss in Boots. Yeah. He's so good. I love it. <laughs> Which is great, because he's just playing Zorro as a cat. Uh, okay, the rabbits, or as we like to call him, the Count of... Um, anyway, Will Arnett. <laughs> the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> the Count of Monte Verde. Uh, the rabbit. That joke kind of pushes it too fast. <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh about him, and then the, but that's more than the rabbit character did. Yeah. Dr. Doolittle do a little doo-doo. <laughs> I don't like the rabbit. That's, again, one of the lines I say every single time. And it's not a good line. <sighs> this is a tough one. I'm going to say fail. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's the right decision. Bury the tiger. Uh, Ra pass. R Rafe finds. Easy pass. I don't know if he exceeds. No, I don't think he does exceed. But I, Most of the characters that exceed are, are just joke characters for me, like things that I think are fun. I think it goes him than John Cena for best voice acting. Yes. I like him. I feel bad for his berry berries. <laughs> uh, the hyena and the bear. You already said the pirates exceeded. This is from the feast scene. Oh, yeah. Exceed. I love the hyena and the bear. I don't know why there's a hyena there. It's cool. Hyenas, the hyena's just walking and the bear is scratching Standing, his back on yeah. a pillar. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> and that brings us to the orangutan. We already know. Okay. I'd like to make an exception for the orangutan and say, like super exceed so like what what, what can i put a, a, the tier above the yeah because this is like if there's one thing in this movie that's like the best it's the orangutan and there's such a mystery about him too because we don't know who he is i think he grows up to be king louis well aside from being <laughs> king louis we don't know who voices him i guess is what i mean by that i uh, i think it's uh christopher <laughs> christopher walken <laughs> Um, okay. Orangutan exceeds. Yeah. Well, no. What's special, he doing there? It's beyond exceeds. Special, yeah. special. What's, I don't know. What, uh, what, do, we, a, what can we give do him? What can we award him? An Eden fruit? You know what? He's one of the dragons in the room. He's, he'll always be with he'll us. Always be. <laughs> Every time we address a whoever, dragon in the room, whoever we're you also are addressing there, him. Mysterious orangutan. Which brings us to the dragon itself. <laughs> Fail. Uh, Ginkgo who soars. <laughs> You may be able to speak my, my language. language. That does not mean you're worthy for the Eden fruit. Francis de la Tour is the actress's name who voices the dragon. Ginkgo um, who soars. I said, Ginkgo who soar. I said fail. I. It's like between fail and pass. Like it's. I, it's not bad enough for a fail, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just like a, the content around it is so awful. It exceeds. <laughs> <laughs> dragon anima i'm willing exceed. to i don't know i think i want to fail it see that's i want to fail it but if we're going off of like character performance i i don't know somewhere between the fail pass line yeah but if we add in the you know i'm just gonna say pass because if you add in the dragon anima oh good heavens is that what it says i think she's about to that dude as well there <laughs> <laughs> she was one of the few people who showed up on set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, <laughs> good heavens. A pass. Shoot, pass, I guess. Well, luckily, that brings us to the last character of the movie. Do you know who has not been brought up? The bats? Oh, I forgot about the bats. <laughs> Okay, the bats, they're, they're the post. They're the post credit scene. <laughs> what do you What do you give them the bats? Uh, exceed. Really? Yeah, because they become one with Moonfly. Uh, yeah. yeah. um, do you know the last character? He has a speaking line. It is a he. He was. Is it an animal? It's not an animal. Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't humans animals as well? It's a human. Okay. Um, it's a human male. Human male. I've got. Wait, you you missed Jeff. Oh, I missed Jeff. <laughs> I knew. Crikey. <laughs> Jeff exceed. Break that down. I forgot Jeff about Jeff. Exceed. For those of you who haven't watched the movie but intend to, I won't spoil it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who plays Jeff either. Jeff exceeds. We'll keep that a mystery. Uh, do you know this last character? Uh, I don't. I've got a... Oh, it's the boy who gets caught in the net for it's, Yoshi the it Eat. Is. It's the postman. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a letter for Dr. Doolittle. Um, yeah, we'll pass him. He's about to be eaten. Okay, that's everyone. We we went through every single character and we got your thoughts after 75 viewings of can pass, I get, fail, and exceed. Can I get a count on? Yeah, give me a second to tally this up. Here's the final tally of grades from the 64 characters that we graded. 16 fail, 31 pass, 16 exceed, and 1 super exceed. So that's actually pretty balanced. And if you divided out the 94 minutes of non-credits runtime evenly, that would leave a minute and 18 seconds of screen time per character. <laughs> there are so many characters. I thought that would take us like 20 minutes. A special mention to whoever designed the wolf. <laughs> um orangutan needs more of him really we need to know who he is someone tell us okay d here's the thing after 75 viewings do you have any glaring questions like huge massive things that you want answered about this movie one of them for me i know i've only seen it who is the times. orangutan who is the orangutan i'd like to know i also i would like to know who the fly is I'd like to know all the characters the fly might be that have lines that aren't listed on imdb I'd also like to know at like, especially after watching behind the scenes stuff, it's so hard to know what shoots or reshoots. It's just like conjecture. I'd like to know why Steven, like I, I'd like to know more on why his cut was bad. Yeah, that's fair. I'd love to see it. Stevie, if you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, you can send us an email to Dr. View Little at gmail.com that's dr.viewlittle at gmail.com uh before we get into that an anonymous email as a matter of fact anything else you've been doing this week i know you've been crunching the numbers i you know i after scrolling through twitter for every mention of, of doolittle 2020 and realizing how many fans selena gomez has <laughs> for such a small part of the movie that was an incredible amount of publicity that she brought to the movie Wait, people liked her? Uh, it's just her fans, because the stan culture is so massive. So there were so many tweets that were talking about Doolittle 2020 and Selena Gomez. That's wild. And it wasn't like necessarily directly about her performance. It was just like, Selena Gomez is in Doolittle. We got to get it trending. Like, that's and what the, they don't that's... realize is they just got Frank <laughs> Right. To voice the giraffe Betsy. Yeah. <laughs> the other things from those tweets, there were tons of Cats 2019 comparisons. Well, yeah. I mean, that one's fair because they're both disaster movies. Yeah, they are both disaster movies. And they're both from Universal too, Yeah, which is kind of funny. And they both happened like the same time. Yeah. They were in theaters at the same time. The further back you go, people were more and more excited for the release of the movie. Like, yeah. especially before the title got changed. There are tons of Robert Downey Jr. fans and Tom Holland <laughs> fans who are getting hyped up. My favorites were all the people dunking on the movie and some behind the scene gems that we'll bring up in later episodes. So that's like all you've been doing? No, I watched movies too. I watched a Stephen Chow. He stars in it. 60 million dollar man it's from 1995 it's yeah. a hong kong movie so and it's comedy so they always pull in like tons of references there's like stuff to pulp fiction yeah. and there's stuff to is that terminator a, and there's stuff to is that a uh a secret agent movie no he's just like a super rich guy okay who's sort of a jerk and he gets 
rebuilt into a robot that fights with everyday appliances. He has like a super chip in his brain that lets him transform his body that rules. Into, into everyday appliances. And it's hilarious. It's really stupid. It has a lot of very, very fun effects work in it where it's like the fun behind watching the movie is seeing, ah, oh, how do they go about doing this? How do yeah. they set up this? So it's like fun, practical and computer generated effects that are I, I mean, I laughed a lot. I was laughing. Oh, yeah. I'll so, have to watch that. It's kind of grimy, too, but it's really funny. Oh, I watched uh, 83. It's an Indian cricket movie. Because <laughs> in 83, India upset the world and won the World Cup. It's really good, but it doesn't tell you anything about cricket. Which isn't... <laughs> good one <laughs> so i i guess i recommend it but it, it is like it's just a good movie that has nothing to say about cricket besides that's like you have to watch a lot of cricket right mm -hmm. but that's a good thing i think because it doesn't waste any time in telling you what it is i've watched both terminators the first and the second one they rule you know uh if doolittle could pull off a terminator 2 style sequel bringing in james cameron and <laughs> well james cameron was terminator as well yeah he was that's true james cameron is a wizard with cgi like yeah the, he, yeah. the special effects in terminator 2 like they they definitely age but 70 percent of them look really good and in context of the movie they all look good there's like a really good mix of practical and and it just works super well even if it doesn't look as realistic because mm -hmm. the movie's built in a way that it works so like comparing the two like I guess if a Doolittle 2 sequel would be more of, uh, you would just get rid of special effects altogether. Because, <laughs> like, that's what it was. Is like, Terminator has some special effects, but it's, like, a lot of practical stuff, like gunfighting stuff, and that's really cool. So by the sequel, him adding in all the CGI, that's just incredible. It kind of adds a lot. So I guess if Doolittle 2 is all the animals he did, <laughs> and he makes his depression movie. Doolittle was finally alone, alone. <laughs> all of the animal lifespans, he's outlived them all. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just him. It's <laughs> just Polly now. Him and Polly. Because parrots live 80 years or whatever. <laughs> Stubbin's gone off. He has his own family. <laughs> he doesn't ever write or call. He has another apprentice named Stubbins, but it's actually like <laughs> Stubbins 32. Any final thoughts for the diamond viewing this episode was a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to realize how many, how characters. many characters there are in this movie i would say i enjoyed viewing it today and i would say yeah in celebration of me watching it 75 times how about you go home <laughs> you buy yourself a copy you maybe get a bunch of bugles <laughs> maybe i don't oh, know hold on that just reminded me i'm now i'm thinking about code red we need to address this this item this reshoot I, item. i was thinking it about this is that code red is probably what they use in the uk code red is what they use in the uk the uk hospitals have that as a standardized code across the nhs right and so, we use live wire when we pour directly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly that's exactly right did you enjoy the movie today did i enjoy the movie today um i was so focused on writing down every character <laughs> so, i don't think i enjoyed it today i don't think i'm gonna recommend it today I don't, so this I don't is so. number eight i've i've watched this movie now eight times which means since i've been keeping track of movies since july of 2017 that i've watched it is my most watched movie. So, yep. It finally passed Independence Day. <laughs> we still have 25 weeks until a, a century, the centennial episode. 25 weeks for, until the centennial episode and, and uh, then, a yeah, lot more to go before. A lot more to go. If you're not enjoying it now, you better start changing your mind. <laughs> You get with the program you okay plenty of time to get with it yeah and if those of you who are listening uh you'll have plenty of time as well to follow us and uh subscribe to our youtube and toss us a little rating if you have a chance on your various podcast we uh, are on platforms simplecast right we're on simplecast that's our main one and from there it goes out to itunes and spotify and a few others and then we are also on youtube what's our channel name our channel name is speaking in animals speaking in animals it's linked in the show notes 
Well, thank you for this great honor of 75 views. I'm glad to have shared this. Uh, congratulations on this milestone. Thank you. And this is Finn signing off. And I'm Frank and I'm out of here. And nobody told me there'd be a dragon. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, also, it's called Talk to the Animals. That was the special feature from last episode. We got that one wrong as well. It, it wasn't Talk to to animals it wasn't talking to animals it wasn't talking with animals it was talk to the animals so thanks everyone <laughs> oh and w one more thing <laughs> oh yeah one more thing actually i do have um we, so we had subtitles on today and i noticed that we're talking, we're talking and treat. i didn't, didn't know what he was saying before but now i know okay and then with that i think we're done uh just one more thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one more thing actually. So they say she'll be lucky to last. <laughs> okay, we're out of here.